Moore, artistic director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening at Broadway's Lyric Theater March 13, 1928, with music by Rudolph Frimmel, lyrics by Clifford Gray and P.G. Wodehouse, and a book by William Anthony McGuire based on the story by Alexander Dumas, The Three Musketeers was one of the big musical hits of that season. Anticipating musicals based on great novels like Les Miserables, Jane Eyre, Ragtime, and The Color Purple, the original Broadway production of The Three Musketeers was produced by Florin Ziegfeld, with a cast that included stage and future film actors Douglas Dumbrill as Atos, Reginald Owen as Cardinal Richelieu, Vivian Siegel as Constance Bonacieux, and Dennis King as D'Artagnan, who was paid $2,000 per week against 10% of the gross, an unheard-of fee at that time. King reprised his role for a successful West End run in 1930. Set in France and England in 1926, the plot recounts the adventures of a young man named D'Artagnan after he leaves home to become a musketeer of the guard. The three men of the title are his friends Athos, Portos, and Aramis, who joined D'Artagnan in recovering the stolen jewels of the Queen of France. The story and characters have been one of the most dramatized over the years on stage, radio, and screens, both large and small. Here on the January 28, 1952 episode of The Railroad Hour are Dorothy Warrenschold, William Conrad, Francis X. Bushman, Bill Johnstone, Carlton Young, Ted DeCorzia, and Gordon McRae in The Three Musketeers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the rousing Rudolph Frimmel operetta, The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going back to the adventurous days of Louis XIII. Dorothy Warnshold is the lovely lady-in-waiting, Constance. My name is D'Artagnan. And may I present... Monsieur Porthos. At your service. Monsieur Athos. Monsieur Midar. Monsieur Aramis. Your humble servant. And do you know who we are? We are the musketeers. Oh, dashing musketeers. Stout comrade musketeers. Bound to ride side by side. To and side. We no folk can hide his fears when faced by musketeers. He wisely disappears. Poor and daring, we are ever sharing strangers to danger. Tomato sack, a town, all right, a foeman down. There's one for all and all for one. We stand on the wall. began when I first came to Paris, a very young recruit from Gascony, and I stumbled right on to the three musketeers. 
<laughs> well, Trump, Porthos, uh, how can such a fat man duel so magnificent? Are we not musketeers? And what is a musketeer's duty? To fight, to love, to live. And the devil take Richelieu's guards. <laughs> we do not take them first. Musketeers. My lady Constance. Oh, my dear friends. Athos the melancholy, Porthos the portly one, and Aramis the heartbreaker. Uh, dear Constance, you must choose one of us. Yes, tell us, what kind of a man do you wish to marry? What kind of man? Well, someone attractive, gallant and active, daring, forbearing. She's thinking of me. you to stop. Uh, idiot! You've knocked the very blade from my hand. And you walked on my feet. And ripped my cape. Who are you that you dare to stumble on us like that? My name is D'Artagnan. I am from Gascony. And I have come to Paris to become a musketeer. Well, you've made a bad beginning. Young Sprout, I challenge you to a duel. I accept. Only because I am the best swordsman in France. Behind the Luxembourg at noon. Agreed. Sir, you have equally insulted me. I challenge you to a duel. Behind the Luxembourg at one. He won't be alive to be present. As for me, you've insulted both my feet and me. Behind the Luxembourg at two. Very convenient. It is where I live. Good. It is where you will die. Come, musketeers, to your duties. Uh, I uh, imagine I'm yours. Oh, monsieur, you should not have accepted their challenges. They are the musketeers, the best swordsmen in France. Uh, the second best. Thank you for your concern, Mistress... Uh... Constance. Constance. Lovely name for a lovely girl. Ah, he's romantic, too. I guess. I'm not only the greatest swordsman in France, but the greatest lover. Ah, you are not the most modest man in France, monsieur. Well, I have been taught to speak frankly. And Mistress Constance, in Gascony, when we see a girl who is more beautiful than any we've ever seen before, we do this. We take her hand. Yes. We look into her eyes. Yes. And then we say... Ma belle, ma belle, you are so charming, I'm enchanted with you. Ma belle, ma belle, your eyes are daring me and thrilling me too. Every smile. Take me, my 
Tell me where and when. Oh, monsieur, you must not duel with the three musketeers. They will kill you. I am honored and thrilled at your concern, Mistress Constance. There are only two things I wish in life. Love of a good woman and the chance to become one of the king's musketeers. Only by proving I am their equal can I become one of them. <laughs> Ah, so I see. I didn't expect all three of you at once. But uh, there may not be enough of me to go around. We're each other's seconds. We'll take you on one at a time. No. Why not let me fight all three of you at once? Sir, you're a brave young man. And if you survive my sword, I shall be most happy to make your acquaintance. Thank you. Monsieur Porthos, you are first. <laughs> Boy, I like your spirits. What a pity I have to annihilate you. Oh, God! Uh. Uh. Stop! I order you to stop during in the name of his eminence, Richard. See, you that be gone! Take those red-coated dummies with you. You insult my men. We challenge you. Just a moment, Shazak. Surely even you wouldn't attack three men with your five. There are four of you. This young Gascon... He's no musketeer. I feel like a musketeer. Retire, young sprout, and save your skin. I'd rather stay and puncture Monsieur Jusac. Very well, Jusac. It's three and a half to five. Bongas, musketeers! Let's serenade them with our motto as they die! <laughs> We're all... D'Artagnan, your view nobly. Would like to become your friend. And I. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank dear heaven. Oh, you are still alive. What's this? Constance, such concern for us. Oh, you're not dead, Monsieur D'Artagnan. I thought you would be lost. Ah, uh, this is the he for her. Clive, dear lady. My eyes are still open. I'll be looking only at you. Oh, 
loves me. Oh, how can I fail? All I wish in life now is to become a musketeer. Perhaps one day you shall wear our uniform. May we say there is hope. Thank you, my friends. On hope, a man lives. I have read history and I've heard tales of brave men, but none were like the musketeers. <laughs> A score of heroes there have been with quite a claim to name and fame. Still in mind and in a fight. And long in song, with fervent admiration, poets have extolled their doings bold. And oh, so at home were those men of old. And yet, to one and all, they seem small to these men of whom one hears. True for you, true for you. Beside the king's own musketeers We are the musketeers Oh, dashing musketeers Stop on their musketeers Bound to ride side by side True and side We found for years and years No Musketeers in just a moment. Last week and on several previous occasions, we discussed on this program how important it is to all of us that our railroads receive adequate revenues. Revenues that today can come only from freight rates which are in keeping with current prices and the higher cost of doing business. Because railroad freight charges enter into the price of virtually everything you buy, you might think that freight rates constitute a much larger part of the cost of things than they do. As a matter of fact, railroad freight rates are a very small percentage of the cost of most commodities. 
According to calculations based on studies by the Bureau of Transport Economics and Statistics of the Interstate Commerce Commission, the total amount collected by the railroads in freight charges averages less than six cents out of each dollar of the wholesale value at destination of all the commodities moved by rail. And, of course, when it comes to retail prices, freight charges represent a still smaller proportion, probably no more than three or four cents on the dollar. Because their operating costs have gone up so much farther and faster than their revenues, the railroads have found it necessary to ask the Interstate Commerce Commission for authority to increase freight rates a little more than 7% above present rate levels. But that would not mean a like percent of increase in average prices. It would mean only an increase in those three or four cents out of each dollar of retail prices which are represented by railroad freight charges, so that the increase would be, on the average, only about one-third of one cent in each dollar of retail prices. If freight rates are such as to enable the railroads to meet today's costs and to continue their progress in efficiency and economy through improvements in their facilities, the resulting increase would hardly be noticeable in the prices you pay. But it would mean that the industry in which we all have such a big stake could go ahead with its expansion and improvement program, a program essential to meet the transportation needs of commerce and national defense. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater producing artistic associate Frankie Leo Bennett. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Rudolph Frimmel's The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae as D'Artagnan and Dorothy Warrenshaw as the lovely Constance. <laughs> My friends, my friends, the musketeers, Milady the Queen is in great danger. We live to serve her. Tell us, Constance, tell us what we can do. Richelieu has discovered letters of the Queen's in England. Letters such as any girl writes when she is young. The Queen is a woman now. She loves France. She loves the King. Then what value have the letters? Richelieu plans to use them to split the royal family, to split all of France, and, and thus come to power himself. One of us will go to England. We will get the letters and destroy them. Richelieu's guards wait like rats at the wharves. Any of you who try to leave France will be killed. Then I shall go. Richelieu does not know my face. Not yet. Oh, no, D'Artagnan. We will never see you again. We will all go together. One for all. All for all. one. I will go alone. No, not alone. My oldest friend will go with me. My sword will clear my way. My sword will make them pay. Who's afraid or who will face a blade that brings you blood and death and judgment day? brave man. There is danger for you here, my lady Constance. If Richelieu knows you plot against him... We must each go down dangerous paths, dear friend. I shall remember the look in your eyes. That memory will make me brave. And the look in your eyes, dear Constance, will make me invincible. Oh, the path that I Dread and dark and dream. A light will be shining to guide you, guide you, guide you. Going forever beside you, casting out your fear. 
storms that rise shall ever upright me. Go for weeks. No words. No signs. Stop worrying. You are in love with him, aren't you? Oh, yes, Porthos. Give me your Constance. For love is the law of the universe. Listen. D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan. Oh, he's coming. We met this young sprout at Calais and raced him back here in the fastest carriage. We knew there would be uh, somebody waiting. Mr. Constance. May I report that the work is accomplished. The deed is done. Her Majesty the Queen is safe. Musketeers, about face! This young sprout has some more work to do. Oh. Marble, marble. Your Majesty. Rise, Monsieur d'Artagnan. I've heard from my musketeers of your service to our country. They asked that I appoint you a musketeer. But, but you're already wearing the uniform. I, I was not certain of your intention, sire. So I put it on so you could see how well I look in it. <laughs> you are an anxious young man. Tell me. In exactly what manner did you serve us in France? Sire, it was a question of love. Of love, your majesty. Love? Of one of the queen's ladies, Mademoiselle Constance. But I'm afraid she will not have me unless I'm a member of the great camaraderie, sire. A fourth musketeer. Deal, Monsieur d'Artagnan. Oh, your majesty. I, Louis, King of France, appoint you, D'Artagnan, one of my musketeers, to love, to live, to fight for France. Your Majesty, I serve you with my life, and Mademoiselle Constance, I serve forever. We found for years and years, no folk can hide his fears, well, Dorothy Warren Scholl will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, our very heartfelt thanks to the other members of our cast, Francis X. Bushman, Bill Conrad, Ted DeCorsia, Bill Johnstone, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. Three Musketeers with books by William Anthony McGuire, lyrics by P.G. Wodehouse and Clifford Gray, music by Rudolph Frimmel, dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. Now here again is our delightful leading lady, Dorothy Warren Scholl. Wasn't that romantic, though? <clears throat> well, it certainly was, Dorothy. Frankly, I swashed the buckle right off my belt. <laughs> it certainly is good to have you back, though, Dorothy. You know, we, we really consider you part of our railroad family. Well, thank you, Gordon. And, of course, you know I never miss one of your broadcasts. Tell me, what can I listen to next week? 
Well, sir, maybe Benzel will be our guest, Dorsey. And we're presenting the delightful Romberg Hammerstein operetta, East Wind. Well, now, that sounds like a nice, breezy show. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Well, you come back real soon, Dorothy. All aboard! Sir, it looks like we're ready to pull out. And so on to next Monday night and East Wind. This is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Three Musketeers was presented by Special Arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers Starlet. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. 56 years after it debuted on Broadway, a 1984 Broadway revival of The Three Musketeers appeared. It featured a new book by Mark Bramble, who had adapted the life story of P.T. Barnum, as well as the book and film 42nd Street for the stage, and it was directed by Joe Layton. In his review in the New York Times, Frank Rich described the show as, quote, a good-natured attempt to jazz up Rudolph Frimmel's Dumas-inspired operetta, much as the New York Shakespeare Festival retooled the Pirates of Penzance a few seasons ago, unquote. The cast included Chuck Wagner as Atos, Brent Spiner as Aramis, and Liz Calloway as Lady Constance Bonacieux. Today's co-star William Conrad was a noted radio writer and actor. He moved to Hollywood after serving in World War II as a fighter pilot and played a series of character roles in movies, beginning with the film noir The Killers in 1946. As one of the greatest voice actors, he created and played the role of Marshal Matt Dillon in the radio series Gunsmoke from 1952 to 61, and narrated the television adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle from 1959 to 64, and The Fugitive from 1963 to 67. After appearing in theater, Francis X. Bushman was hired by SNA Studios in Chicago in 1911, launching his film career and stardom in the silent film His Friend's Wife. He appeared in nearly 200 feature film roles, more than 175 films before 1920, and 17 in his screen debut year of 1911 alone. His most famous film role was as Masala in the 1925 version of Ben-Hur. Bill Johnstone acted on stage with the Theater Guild at the beginning of his career, appearing in a number of bit parts. In 1938, he was selected over 45 other actors to replace Orson Welles as The Shadow on radio. He also starred as Ben Guthrie in the radio version of The Lineup and became one of the most prolific radio actors of his time, with many supporting roles. Theaters across the country need your support now more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. 